message is growth is change, and change is growth. Amen? Amen. I couldn't still want to have both of it on there, but that's the full title. Growth is change, and change is growth. And we don't like change. And this is going to step on some folks' toes because we're all guilty of it, including me. But I've been stepped on already because I've went over it a few times. But I'm going to read this, this letter to the president. Andrew Jackson, dated January 31st, 1829. Now listen to this. It says, <laughs> The canal system of this country is being threatened by the spread of a new form of transportation known as railroads. The federal government must preserve the canals for the following reasons. One, if canal boats are supplanted by railroads, serious unemployment will result. Captains, cooks, drivers, repairmen, and lock tenders will be left without means of livelihood, not to mention numerous farmers now employed in growing hay for horses. Number two, boat builders would suffer and tow line, whip, and harness makers would be left destitute. <laughs> Number three, canal boats are absolutely essential to the defense of the United States. In the event of the expected trouble with England, the Erie Canal would be the only means by which we could ever move the supplies so vital to waging modern war. Modern war. <laughs> he closes. As you may well know, Mr. President, railroad carriages are pulled at the enormous speed of 15 miles per hour by engines which in addition to endangering limb and life of passengers roar and snort their way through the countryside, setting fire to crops, scaring the livestock, and frightening women and children. The Almighty certainly never intended that people should travel at such breakneck speed. Signed, Martin Van Buren, Governor of New York. 1829. Now the irony is that the chapter that this was taken from by a book that was written by Hans Fenzel, he typed that chapter on a laptop in a plane that was traveling 470 miles an hour at 30,000 feet. <laughs> See, by nature, though, human beings resist change. People are quick to criticize anything new, find reasons to justify why they don't want whatever's new coming around the corner. And those are, those are, everything there is valid. Everything there that he listed it makes sense. But on the other hand, people are getting jobs as well. You know, you, you could sit and you could, you could look, hindsight, we can look back and say, man, it really brought a whole lot of, in fact, there's a lot of people still employed uh, with the railroad system. And a few with the canal systems as well. But by nature, we just resist change because change is growth. Growth is change. And if you look at that plant, something has to happen for it to grow, and a lot of people don't like that because the old has to go away. The old has to die before the new can be blessed, before the new can produce. Amen? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> at one time, people said that cars would never replace horse and carriage. A few of you might be in here. I mean, at least your parents, amen. And other times, I remember, man, some of my most memorable times is talking to my grandma and grandpa, you know, when they, that's how they got to town once a month, pulling a buck wagon or whatever, buck board, whatever. Others said that the light bulb wasn't any better than the kerosene lamp. Others declared that television would never, ever replace radio as a primary way of entertainment. The radio would always be the primary way. And when Alexander Graham Bell, when he, when he introduced the thing called a telephone where you could talk long distance to people over a wire, he was almost laughed out of town. He's like, who in the world would ever want to talk to somebody if they're not right there with them? <laughs> no. <Nope. laughs> Some people are sitting and texting when they should be listening right now. Just saying, praise God. <laughs> when <laughs> uh, The Swiss watch, you know, did you? The Swiss watch, what happens when you don't keep up with the times? What happens if you don't accept change? Well, the Swiss watchmaker in the, in the 70s, mid-70s, they had anywhere from 50 to 85% of the world trade. Depending on which thing you look at, 50 to 85% of the market. They owned it, man. But by the mid-80s, they were down to 15%. 
And the, here's the irony. It was a Swiss watchmaker that designed the quartz movement. A Swiss watchmaker came up with that design. But the people that owned and over, 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 they said, no, no, it's not, it's really not a watch. Unless it has springs and you've got to wind it. And that's where we're going to stay. Uh, Seiko and Timex jumped on that quartz movement and you see what happened. In less than 10 years, they were only 15% of the world market. 25,000 watchmakers were put out of jobs. They no longer had jobs. Simply because they wouldn't accept change. The world changed, but they didn't. Look how fast it changes now. And we, we, we talk about how fast things, you know, we're 10 years. Our church has gone through a lot of changes. Those that have been here for the whole 10 years know we've gone through some, some serious changes. From, fa from, from, from facelifts to financial to everything. But look how fast it happens. It, it took 40 years for the radio to reach 50 million people. 40 years for the radio to reach 50 million people. It took 14, only 14 years for the television to do that. <laughs> And it only took four years for the internet to do that. The internet didn't exist. When it, it happened in my lifetime. You know, I thought I was a young person. This is making me feel old. Hello. The first five megabyte hard drive. <laughs> Anybody got a thumb drive in your pocket? My sister's doing live. You're doing live right now. She's doing live Facebook with, with something that's got more computational power than what was on Apollo 11. I'm not lying to you. She's got a little card. That was the first five megabyte hard drive. Those folks, are they're, they're excited. Amen? Praise God there was changes or we wouldn't be where we were today. We wouldn't be able to do what we can. Use today's tools as a method, amen, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because we we never should change the message. Never change the message. Don't add or take away from the message. That's what the Word says. But the method always changes. It will always be changing. And if you stay stuck in doing everything the same way all the time, then you'll be one of those churches that's only got 12 people, and it's the same 12 people when you go back five years later to visit again. Some of y'all have visited those churches with me. And it's the same faces that we went three years later. We go back, and it's the same people doing the same thing. We have to change. Amen. Now, have any of you all ever refused to change or you was upset about a change that you couldn't refuse to change and later you're like, well, this wasn't so bad. <laughs> well, I'm fixed till my age again. When I, when I went in the Army, I was wearing a pickle suit. How many of y'all wore pickle suits, you know? Oh, I'm glad there's somebody else in here that old. <laughs> okay, amen. Amen, I know he did. He's got a Vietnam, Vietnam hat on. I hated camouflage. I was like, I don't want nothing to do with this. Look at all these stupid pockets. I despised it. I wanted my pickle uniform back. My, my greens. Until Desert Storm. And each day you went through and you got two MREs. And boy, they fit right in those cargo pockets. I was like, man, thank God I got these BDUs. Amen. But I didn't want change. I hated change. What would I have done with two MREs till I finally got back to the... Oh, praise God. The early Christians, the early Christians were opposed to change. So, so it, we're in good company when we don't like change. We need to think about that. You know, the Christians, if it wasn't for the early Christians fighting over this, I wouldn't be able to read the Word of God and you wouldn't have it on your phones, you wouldn't have the Bible, because the old Christians, before change, only wanted to be able to tell you what the Bible said and you just being a commoner, Listen to what was being said and what they told you it meant. Praise God for the change. Amen. But there was a battle going on within the body of Christ saying, no, no, this is the way we've always done it. And this is the way we're going to continue to do it. And other people said, no, we're going to put this in writing so every commoner can read the word of God. Praise God. Amen. Obviously, we live in a, in a changing world. And, and the method needs to change. At times, we have to... See what, what we got to do to reach certain people. But the message should never change. You know Jesus' parables. That was a huge change. Some folks were like. "What? Where's he get off doing that? Because you open the scroll. You read. You say what it is. You put the scroll back together. You kiss it and you put it away. And you're done. Service over. 
And Jesus said, there was this man. <laughs> and everybody's like, whoa, it's going to be a story. And when he got done, it was like, woo wee That was powerful. Amen? Amen. We as a church body are forever going through changes. And it's nothing new, but we, we need to think. And I thought, what a, what a great time to talk about change. Because we're at that, the 10-year mark, and, and there's still going to be changes. Amen? We are just talking about the, the new building and talking about different things. And it's all going to happen in God's time. Amen? 2 Peter 3, 17 through 18. The Good News Bible, too. You know, some churches, King James, it was good enough for Jesus, it's good enough for me. It's like Jesus was Aramaic, he didn't read King James. But anyway, <laughs> just saying. 2 Peter 3, 17 through 18. But you, my friends, already know this. Be on your guard then, so that you will not be led away by the errors of a lawless people and fall from your safe position. But continue to grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To Him be the glory, now and forever. Amen. 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 I want you to notice that Peter is warning the people here. He's warning the saints to beware of false prophets. Be on your toes and think. But he's also at the same time telling them that as you, as you're, as you beware of those that are twisting Scripture, understand there's going to be change. He says, grow. I, I, I did that beware and grow. So you can see, He's telling them to grow. And that word means to, uh, it's long term. And it means for change. It means to continue to grow long term. Wax, even increase in this situation. In being accompanied with. Amen. Growth is change. And change is growth. I've said many times that our everyday lives, I say this all the time. Our everyday lives in, in this world, in the flesh, has a spiritual parallel. It, and it's, it's at every level in our lives. For instance, the human body is an incredible mechanism built by God and is perfect in every way. Amen? And like His creation, it, the body, which is also His creation, must change constantly to stay alive. In fact, one of the definitions, clinical definitions for death is, quote, a body that does not change. Because it don't change. So it, it quit changing, it's dead. Change is life. Stagnation is death. Just like with the living water. Amen. The Dead Sea is because it don't go nowhere. You see what I'm saying? If we don't change, we die. Physically and spiritually. That's powerful. Psalm 139, 14 through 15 says, I praise you because you are to be feared. All you do is strange and wonderful. I know it with all my heart. When my bones were being formed, carefully put together in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. Awesome creator. Secrets that still are not known. In fact, it says in Ecclesiastes 11.5, As thou knowest not what is the way of the Spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God who maketh all. That's powerful. Even to the cellular level, it's still a mystery. If you Google today, when you, we, after we have our potluck and fellowship, you go Google how bones grow in the womb, and you'll find these ex explanations of how, but, or, or what happens, but not how it's exactly happening. Well, there's this cartilage, and then it calcifies, and it becomes bone. They don't know. They still don't have a full understanding because God does it. Amen? In the womb, even at the cellular level, our bodies have incredible things to teach us about the church body. Remember, physical, spiritual, parallel. And any time we look at that, we can see spiritual applications. Amen. Amen. And the church body is uh, made up of all different parts, just like the real body, the, the flesh body. And all these different parts have to work, right? Together for it to work. Here's the body of Christ. Amen. Ephesians 4, 11 through 16. It was he who gave gifts to people. He appointed some to be apostles, other to be prophets, other to be evangelists, others to be pastors and teachers. He did this to prepare all God's people for the work of Christian service in order to build up the body of Christ. And so we shall all come together to that oneness in our faith and in our knowledge of the Son of God. We shall become mature people Reaching to the very height of Christ's full stature. Then we shall no longer be children. Carried by the waves. And blown about by every shifting wind of the teaching of deceitful people. 
who lead others into error by the tricks they invent. That's powerful. Instead, by speaking the truth in a spirit of love, we must grow up in every way to Christ, who is the head. Under his control, all the different parts, here we go, all the different parts of the body fit together. And the whole body is held together by every joint with which it is provided. So when each separate part works as it should, that's key, the whole body grows and builds itself up through love. Amen. And the body. Growth is the name of the game. Amen. And I'm not talking about filling these chairs and having a bigger building and filling some more chairs. I'm talking about the body of Christ. Not the body of H2HBC, you see. Amen. Um, so we have to go out and tell others. Amen. Amen. And we all have to do that in a different way. Not exact the way, but a way that God shows you to touch people. Amen. Change is growth. Growth in our own walk as well as the body of Christ. Amen. And as we grow in our own walk, we will touch those that need and bring others into the body of Christ. Like I said before, our everyday lives is a living testimony and has a spiritual parallel. Amen. In the time that it takes me to do this sermon, about five pounds of cells have died in, in or on your body. Gee whiz. Five pounds. From the time we start our praise and worship till the time I say amen at the closing ser uh, message, uh, prayer, five pounds will have either been shed off or ready to fall off or it's been disposed of uh, in the bathroom. <laughs> hey. Five pounds. Why aren't, we seek why aren't we shrinking and why aren't we losing weight? We should just be little bitty things. Well, because for every single cell that dies during that time, another cell just knows, it just knows that it's time to divide and replace that cell. Amen. That's a God thing. Hello. Skin replaces itself every month. For young ones, every 16 days. <laughs> the stomach lining, every five days. I need to do it about every five hours for the stuff I eat. <laughs> <laughs> the skeleton, every three months. 99% of the atoms in our body are replaced every year. Unbelievable. And we know this, but we don't know how. You see what I'm saying? It's a God thing. God does this. The entire body renews itself every seven years. I might argue with that one, but anyway. I don't feel any <laughs> glory. But, you know, we were designed to live forever. You all do know that. Our body was designed to live forever. And the only reason we don't live forever anymore is because of sin. And the tree of life that everybody ate from is in heaven. Amen? To be renewed, the old must die. And that's what happens with our body. And that's what must happen with the body of Christ as well. Amen. Biologists are just now beginning to study the cell death phenomenon that goes on. Where a cell just dies off. A death wish, if you will. And they can't quite understand it. Be, listen, even at the cellular level of our bodies, there's, an, there's a message there in the spiritual world that you're going to learn today. Amen. Amen. One of the, they're called sculpture cells. And sculpture cells don't understand it, but in the womb, when we're first still in there, we have a, a hand. But in between our hand and in between our toes, is, it's all webbed. So our hand can't work as a hand. It's just one thing. Amen? Y'all getting this? Y'all look this up. Make sure money telling you the truth. Amen. My nurse is already going, yeah, he's right. And what happens is this sculpture... It starts dying between the fingers, but the other cells around it know they're not supposed to reproduce. Scientists know it happens. They're not sure how it knows, how they know on a cellular level not to, but what happens is you have these fingers. Amen? Amen? That's the same with the body of Christ, people. With the body of Christ, we are like this, but I already read the scripture to you. Amen? That we all have separate things appointed to us to do for Christ. And as that happens, okay, there's things, and they're called traditions. They're called things that we used to do it this way all the time, but God said, hey, I need you to move over to this way. And the next thing you know, you go, boom, there's a blessings ministry. Whoa, we didn't have nobody doing that before, you know. 
And then we got motorcycle ministry. And then we got nursing home ministry. And then we got Cuss for Christ ministry. Nobody had that one. Amen. And then we got Veterans Outreach Ministry. And I, and I heard, I have a little bug in my ear, that there might even be another one getting ready to start. You know, and, and all these different ministries that are opening up. See, what happened is the, the sculpture cells, they died off, and now we have this working thing as one piece. Everyone doing what God called them to do in a certain way. Amen. Working together as one. Amen. That's what it's about. Finding what God has said, hey, I need you to do this in this way. Then there's obsolescence. This one, this one hits close to home too. When a cell is no longer contributing to the larger body. Oh boy. Got quiet in here. <laughs> Y'all still in here? Crickets. Sound like cr I am going to get me a sound where I can just click this and have crickets make a noise. <laughs> when a cell is no longer contributing to the larger body, it knows it's no longer needed. And it just knows it. Don't understand why. It dies off. The body of Christ is also designed in a way that it, it doesn't always work the way that it always did and it knows it's time to go. And, and when we moved into this church, there was a certain way everything was going. I don't know how many in here would have, not very many of y'all were here, but there was a lot of stuff that we got rid of right off the bat. Well, there was a change, a huge change. And it's because the vision was a little different. We, we took stuff out of here and we took it to the farm. Anybody remember that? Randall, you were here? Wow. Glory to God. Yeah, that's right. A couple, about four more, five more months, he'll have his 10-year pen. So he, 10 years ago, in June, and we can't, we, you helped us out. We, we load up two trailers load of tradition. Some people that belong to our body was like, man, I really don't like this, but I'll, you know, I'll go with the vision. But had there been anybody from the people that had been here before, stayed here, there would have been a lot of problem be, with that change because we, we minister different. We, we, we praise and worship different. So some things we just we took away. Amen. I had no problem. She had no problem with it. Amen. She's still here. Amen. She, she was here. Amen. There's tools. There's tools when you see if, it, and it knows. It knows it. it in, in, the, in the cell, in, in the body, it knows to just no longer be used and it dies off. But here in the spirit, in the body of God, in the body of Christ, God shows us, hey, and, and it's tangible evidence. You know, God shows you and say, hey, that's, you know, we had an outreach that lasted for years, but salvation's just suddenly quit coming in. And it was like, well, maybe, and we prayed about it. It's like, well, maybe we just need to back off that outreach. Maybe it'll start up again somewhere else. Amen. My, my, God had me in the highways and byways, and many of you know my testimony. That's where I thought I always would be. I fought being inside a church. I'm supposed to be outside the church. I, God quit bringing in salvations. That's tangible evidence that maybe I'm in the wrong place. Because when I gave a message, there was always, except the first time, there was always somebody that was touched. Amen? Amen. And so, so that, to me, that's tangible evidence that I, I may need to regroup. Amen? Self-sacrifice. Cells sacrifice themselves to protect large organisms. Oh my goodness. Uh, if a cell is invaded by a deadly virus, it will trigger its own self-destruct mechanism called apoptosis. Did I say it right? Apoptosis. Anyway, it kills itself. When we fall to sin, you're going to say, how does that one fit in? I'm not going to sacrifice myself. Oh, it falls into the body of Christ. Because when we fall to sin, we're supposed to hit our knees and let it die with us. Amen. Is that powerful? We're supposed to let it die with us. If it's gossip... We're not supposed to go over and start doing this. We're supposed to hit their knees. And we, Lord, I fell prey to that again. Please help me. And, and I bind it up. It's gone. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Self-destruct that sin at your feet, at Jesus' feet, and be done with it. Amen. Isolation. This one is really confusing. It says, when neighboring cells exercise the ban on a cell, the cell, it just dies. It's isolated. It, it, there's no explanation why. It just dies. <laughs> just dies. We, that's that's the body of Christ does that we shoot our wounded when we shouldn't when somebody's hurting pray for them amen maybe a word of encouragement maybe a visit depending on what God tells you right but we shouldn't shoot the wounded should we amen that uh the story about the the, the guy that hadn't been to church for three weeks the preacher shows up Knocks on the door. The guy answers the door and he don't want to talk. And he just turns away and walks back to the fireplace. 
The preacher walks over to him and he says, hey, it's no reason to talk to this guy. He's got his mind made up. So he just sits down next to him. He reaches in, he takes the tongs and he takes one of those hot coals out of the fireplace and he sits it down on the hearth or the hearth. He still doesn't say anything. He notices that the guy that he's visiting is staring at that hot coal. And then it gets black on the edges and then it gets down. And there's this little bitty red spot and suddenly the red spot kind of goes out and there's a poof and it's a cold coal. And then the pastor says, well, I better get going. And he reaches down and he grabs the coal with his fingers and he throws it back in the fire and it immediately turns red. Mm-hmm. The pastor gets up and he walks to the door to leave. He said, I'll see you later. And the man turns around and says, Pastor, thank you for the fiery sermon. Amen. I'll be back Sunday. <laughs> Amen. And when, you, when, when you're isolated, when you're isolated, it's over. You become cold. That's, that's a reason right there to make sure you keep going into the body of Christ. Amen. Life and change go together. Changelessness is death. In our walks, in our personal walks, in the full body. John, uh, oh no, I can't skip this. Moses, you implement the two, the old with the new. You don't never get rid of all the old. There's some things. And in, uh, in Exodus 13, 19, Moses took Joseph's bones when they left. Took the old. And it was to remind him. It was a symbol of their history. Amen. But at the same time, what else did they take? Well, they were struggling to remember and had the bones. What else did they take? The plunder. They took the latest inventions that Egypt had. And that's what we should do. We should take the latest inventions that are being, that are being brought up and use them for the glory of God to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. amen? Yeah, amen. Social media. Instead of venting and ranting, <laughs> praise God. Yeah, Put out what's going on for the Lord. John 4.10 says, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldst have asked him, and he would have given living water. Living water. I mentioned that already, right? And then John 7.38 says, He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes. Flowing living water. And the analogy again, Jesus is using, again, and that's the Holy Spirit flowing out of us. That is, the, that is what we need in the body too. Amen? Amen. Jesus used this analogy of living water as he talked to the Samaritan woman to describe the gospel as well. Amen? He also used it at the Feast of Tabernacles which wasn't quite understood because it was a new method. A new method of the same teaching. And God has a method he wants to use bet- from each and every one of us. I had a person ask me, he said, do you think I could present the gospel like this and it'd be okay? I said, if you're presenting the gospel and you're not changing the message, it don't matter the method. If you're not changing the message, it don't matter the method. It takes a lot of different methods to reach those people out there. Amen? Finally, in Mark 16, 15, last scripture. Mark 16, 15, it says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And y'all going, what? He got it back in. Got it in there again, didn't I? When you go outside these walls, you're supposed to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Whether it's your actions or whether it's your words, you're supposed to let people know about the Lord Jesus Christ, what he's done in your life. Did you notice that in there it doesn't say how? Because it changes. It changes. The method always changes. Amen? So whatever God's put on your heart, the how is probably right. Because the method has got to change. But you've got to let people know. Amen? You've got to let people know. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you that change is growth. Lord, that growth is change. Lord, I pray you've touched each and every one of us about the method, the method you want to use within us, individually and within the body of Christ, to get the word out about your son Jesus Christ. Lord, some of us, you've probably showed an action. Not a single word to be spoken, just an action. Some type of act of love and compassion to another. And Lord, I just pray for you to bring that on us. Each and every one of us that you want. Others, it is word, Lord. There's some of us that we're supposed to actually talk to somebody. Some of us are supposed to call somebody. And you've showed us individually who that is. And Lord, I just pray right now that you give each and every one of us the, the movement in the spirit, the courage to do so, follow through. And then the wisdom. Just move us out of the way. And you use the words that need to be said to bring people into your fold to know your son, Jesus Christ. And it's in his name I pray. Amen and amen.